So today, mobilize with message. Everybody say, move with message and mobilize with message. Where you move, my brother, my sister, there will be a message. If you like it or not, you're miserable. Wherever you go, you will have a miserable message and people will see that life is supposed to be miserable. <clears throat> you're walking with bitterness. There's a message of bitterness where you go. Somewhere bitterness will find a message through you. Created in such a way that things can be written on your heart. On the tablets of flesh of your heart. Some or other spirit can write something there. And may God by his grace help us that it will be the Holy Spirit. Amen. So whatever you go through. There's works, there's words, there's a walk. Everybody say words, work, walk. There's a lot of walk. There's a lot of words. There's a lot of intentions in how I can do what God has for me. But the world look at us many times in the past, in the future it will change. They say, what? Fake, fake, fake. This Christian story. It's just a some other fake story. Why? Because they see a words that does not correspond to with a walk and the, with the works that God has prepared for us. And by his grace, by his mercy, even this morning, we say, God, forgive us. Amen? Amen. Forgive us, but help us to set, set ourselves free in your truth that what I speak, the words, will be also the good works that God has prepared for me so that I can come in a walk with God. We don't just walk with God. <clears throat> God is with us like the shadow. God is with us because he's faithful to himself and he said, I will be with you till the end of the age. He will be there. But it doesn't mean he's walking with you. When I have the words and I choose to have the words and I get the word into my life because the words will direct me. And when I hear the good works that God has prepared for me, I start to do that. I'm doing the work for God. I'm saying the things that the word is saying. And now I must do it with God. And as I start to do the work with God and working with him and he's working with me, I start to walk with him. God gave Adam some work to do. He gave him a lot of words of what he supposed, what not. But then at the end of the day, he came and he wanted to walk with him. And he said, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? But I can be so busy to find out the words. Or I don't get to know the words. So I cannot hear when God is calling me to walk with him. Get the language in order. Get his language so that you can understand the language. Amen. Get it in there. Get it in here. So that when you work what God has given you and you can... Do what he has called you to do. You can hear his voice to walk with him in it. Are you still here? But I can be so busy with the work that I never hear his voice to walk with him. While busy with the work, the work that God has called me to do can become a curse. Because I say I'm doing this work for the Lord, but he never called me to do that. And your heart is genuine. You say in Jesus' name, God at the end of the day says, I don't know you. I don't recognize you in the work that you've done. I don't recognize my name. I don't recognize my presence because it's not kingdom built. So let's not waste our time. Let's not waste our time and drown in a lot of work. You know, I'm so busy. I'm so. Make sure you're busy with the business of God. I'm in my father's business, Jesus said. So be in your father's business, my brother, my sister, and understand that what you say, what you do, how you walk, it will be the same. But the walk is a privilege, a privilege. God called Adam to walk with him. And then we see a man that so walked with God, you know, that he walked, he just walked straight in heaven, into heaven. He didn't even die. Hey, you remember that the Bible says there was such a dimension of intimacy 
between heaven and earth in this guy that he walked in such a way he just walked into heaven and then you find a man and God said I'm finished with, with men on earth because they are all just full of the flesh they're not one is serving me but 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 the word says there was a man who walked with God Noah 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 and may God start a new thing with you when you walk with him. When he may start a new thing in Bluefontein with you because you walk with him. And when you walk with him, God will start a new thing. God can use you as a pioneer. God can use you to bring something new when you know how to walk with him. Hello? Then God wanted to make a model. Say a model. What did he mean by inheriting the earth? He's looking for a model. Oh, he find a man and the word says, and Abram walked with him God said walk before me and you will be blameless wandel voor my aangezig en dan sal jy opreg wees to be blameless to to be upright to be to be genuine if I tell you be genuine how must you be genuine the scripture says when you walk before me you will be genuine you will be upright you will have that genuineness in you Amen. That was Abram. And so at the end of the day, we find it with everyone. Then we find with Jesus. Definitely, he walked with his father. He walked with his father. What his father said, he said. What his father, you see, his father is doing, he will be doing. Where father is saying he must go, there he will go. He walked with God. And then at the end of the day, Romans 8, those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Not just the children of God. Children of God. When you gave your life to Christ, you're a child. God will never leave you, never forsake you, you'll go to heaven. But as a child, you're supposed to grow up. Grow up in the Son of God to become a Son of God. But child is, thank you Lord, in my needs for the bread and the this and the this. But to become a Son of God is less of me, more of you. Less of me, more of you. Less of me, more of you. Then I become a Son in the Son. And as son is, it's all about him, it's nothing about me. Child, yes, you'll always be a child to be dependent on God. God, I cannot do it without you. A son stands with stature in a place. He has a message and he becomes the message. When you walk with God, you become the message. To so many people out there, they want to go to church, they want to open the Bible, but you become the message. Walk out the message when you eat the message and you speak the message and you work the message and then you work the message with God and you become the message. There's a message from heaven in Bluefontein. It's the children of God who works and walks with him. Who were brave enough and had the guts to lose themselves, deny themselves, not destroy themselves in religion, deny themselves. To take up the cross, the cross, no, Jesus took their cross, their identity, and to follow him with the identity that God has given them. Amen. Are you still here? Amen. So, my brother, my sister, you will be on the mountain. You're supposed to be on the mountain, sorry. You will create for yourself a mountain, a mountain of your experience, a mountain of your hurt. And you will get on the mountain and you will come down from that mountain. And your message is based on the hurt that you got, uh, the offenses that you got, how church uh, disappointed you, how this leader did that, your brother did that. <sighs> how you had this opportunity, the mountain of vision. And you come down with a vision that you heard from vision and you didn't hear it from God. Because you'd spend time with a vision on the mountain. But then he's a moment, he's on the mountain in his presence. We can't not just order him to do certain things. We can't just want to be also with him. He wants to commune with him. He just wants to share his heart and want you to share your heart just to be. Like we say sometimes, go and sit in a place, make, a, make some coffee and speak to God. Are you with me? But in that place, in that place, God is giving him mandate, mandate. When he came down the mountain, he came with a mandate. 
When the church understand how to be on the mountain and get the mandate on the mountain, they will come down and they will be able to address all the golden calves that the nations worship. But we can stand and say, oh, in government or in this or in the city or in the nation, they worship this and they worship that. And they... You can stand in the valley and you do that and you do that. The only way, reason why you do that and speak about what they do and not do is because you didn't come from the mountain. To deal with all the idols, to deal with the golden calves in the nations, it must stay there if the children are not willing to get on the mountain, get the mandate and come like a Moses down with the mandate and then deal with the golden calf. So, so who's supposed to? First, not point the finger, but look at themselves and say, God, forgive us as church. Forgive us. Bring us in brokenness. Bring us in humility, in humility before your throne so that you lift me us up with a mandate so that where we go, we will address the golden calves in the nation, the golden calves in education, the golden calves in business, the golden calves in sport, whatever golden calves. You, know, you can throw a tent and oh, the golden calves. Everybody saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, we stop that, hey? No, you didn't say that. Say, ying, ying, ying. <laughs> husband, wife, next time, just tell your husband. Ying, 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 ying. No, 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 no. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I wasn't serious. Okay, right. What am I saying? Guys, all that hawaras, all that things. If the church can rise, the church, God through the church will have the final say in the nation if the church will rise. Doesn't matter who's in control in the government. As long as there's this voice with authority like a Joseph in government, like a Joseph or a Daniel, well, when they open their mouth, the presence of God is there. The fear of God falls on the people and they say, where the... Oh, they, maybe they will say where the hell. Where on earth did they get that wisdom? So, so let's pray for the men and the women. Don't say, oh, they are all corrupt. ANC is all corrupt. These ones are all that. EFF is all that. That finger that's connected with hell. Why we must your finger can be connected with hell and judging everybody? No, man, let's, let's stop that, huh? Is anyone not here? Okay, so, so let's go to the scripture, otherwise you're going to take long. How beautiful. Hey, you put it already there. You thought I had to start already, hey. No, it's good, I hear. How beautiful. Everybody say beautiful. beautiful. On the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. The world will say who reigns. The world will be on the mountain with demons and they will come down and say, this is what will reign. This is will be the, that pathetic form of identity for kids. This is what will reign. In the schools, nothing about Jesus. This will happen. Nothing about this. And some other God is calling the shots. But when the church come from the mountain, there will be a voice. There's only one God who reigns, that's Jesus Christ. But if we don't come from the mountain, we can talk, we can talk. But the talk is cheap. No, it cannot be anymore. In Jesus' name. Beautiful, your feet, because you become the message. Your feet brings the message. And your message is supposed to be beautiful. But when we come in the name of religion, we just bring the law of death, condemnation, and what's supposed to and where we need to change, and this and this. But it's just the condemnation. But in your own life, my brother and my sister, where you've condemned yourself with a lot of stuff, leave that. Get on the mountain. And with God, first of all, walk into your life, walk into your own emotions, walk into your hurts, walk into your disappointments with a beautiful message of good news. Good news for that hurt. Proclaim peace with that turmoil with people and turmoil with yourself. Proclaim peace with a message unto yourself. David from his spirit with a message speaking to his soul says, Soul, why are you downcast? Speak to your soul. Preach the message to your soul from your spirit. Are you here? 
who brings good tidings. You bring what? Sometimes you see that person, you think, oh, here comes trouble. That guy comes and says, oh, we are going to be in trouble again. Or make sure, first of all, your heart is right. Because sometimes a good message can come. But because you're listening to demons, those demons will tell you, oh, there comes trouble. But it's not trouble. It's trouble for the demons, but not trouble for you. But if you're so busy with your issues, so busy with your issues with people. Now I have an issue with Caleb. It's easy to get an issue with him. And, uh, <laughs> and so when Caleb is coming, oh, here comes issues again. Because you don't come from the mountain. You're just flirting around. And the, and the word says, don't have fellowship with demons. You stay at the, on, in the valley. Your time with God is, is pathetic. Not anymore. In Jesus' name. Or your time with God is up and down and this. You will have fellowship with demons. You will have fellowship, bottom line. If you don't have fellowship with God on the mountain, you will have fellowship with demons in the valley. But there's not a middle way. The devil will be faithful to you to make sure when you give him an open door that he will rock up, he will be there. He will be committed. Bottom line. So I charge you, I challenge you, I, I beseech you. What's that nice word? Please get on the mountain with God so that there you receive the manager. And you know the worst. Oh, sorry. No, the best is when... That man came from the mountain and he saw the chamors, he saw the rubbish. And he made a mistake and he just threw the mandate down. When you have the mandate, be patient, be kind, be good, forgive, and that, come on with all of that. And you come into that situation and you're just fed up and you, and you throw down the mandate of kindness, goodness, love, forgiveness, and all that. No, praise God for his grace. When Moses went up the mountain, God said, okay, I will do it again. I will write again. And he wrote again. The next said, no, Moses, what you've done, go and tell them it was you. I, I've done. I've done it good. But you messed up. Go and tell them you messed up. Why must I write it all over again? The Ten Commandments. No, by God's grace, through his blood, you can enter with boldness to the throne of grace and say, God, I messed up what you've given me. I messed up what you have written on my heart through the Holy Spirit. Forgive me. Can you please write again? <laughs> and God will write again for you to go down and then deal with that what is wrong. You with me? Please, my brother, may you come from the mountain. Beautiful, beautiful defeat. That come from the mountain. That come from the mountains. Because there you have authority. You know in Israel, the guys many times, they were guys that their heart was set on God. They were other kings, but they were full of rubbish. And they did a lot of rubbish. Worshipped a lot of chamors. But unfortunately, many of them, the word says, their heart was set on God, but the high places were not broken down. Where? On the Mountains. Now that is not an amen, let it be so. That is ouch. That is God forgive us. Hey? So the high places on the mountains, my brother, my sister, that's the place supposed to be the place where you go and have that time with God. What is that mountain? There's only Naval Hill and here the crosses. And we're not talking about that. We're talking about you getting into the place higher above your circumstance, above your situation, above because you're actually seated with Christ in heavenly places, according to the word. So get into that higher place above yourself, above your opinion, above your hurt, above your offenses and all your smart ideas. Not you, other people, but still. And from that place, coming from his presence, you will have a beautiful, beautiful message where you go. Let it be clear. You'll proclaim peace, not proclaim who's right, who's wrong in this fight. Who's right, who's wrong. Uh-uh, no finger. But the peace, and the peace is not everybody is okay with one another. Unfortunately, that peace has to do with harmony between you and God. And where there's no harmony, yes, there's manifestation. So when you bring the gospel of peace, the message of reconciliation, there can be a lot of turmoil. 
You come into a place, you open your mouth. There's a lot that will not agree. Not agree. And then they persecute you. Not, but make sure. If you talk a lot of rubbish and just condemnation. And then you go out, oh, persecution for the name of Jesus. No, persecution for the foolishness of what you said. So I must be led by the Spirit. I must come from His presence. Not just know the Word, but know the God of the Word and understand how to walk with it. Amen. God's going to use the church in the end time like never before. Because hell will be vomited out on earth. The fullness is of hell is going to come. And that is not an amen, that's an ouch. And when the vomit, everything is vomited on earth... In the fullness of darkness, the excellence of his light will shine so much brighter. But that's for the one that will not choose to compromise and flirt around between type of light, type of darkness, type of light, type of darkness. Uh uh. Cannot be, cannot happen. Proclaim salvation, you proclaim solutions. You proclaim there's nobody that can be bound. There's nobody that can be a slave and has to be a slave of the rubbish of the world, of whatever is there. There's always a way out. There's always a way out through Jesus. I mean, that's the first one. Second one. He said to them, okay, that's the interesting them. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Go into the world and preach the what news? Good news. All right, next one. Uh, the disciples went out when they obeyed, preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word, confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied, signs that accompanied the word. There will be manifestation, there will be miracles that work with the word as you work with God and God works with you. But that is when the walk happens. There's the word that I hear, there's the word that I hear, there's the word that I take, I'm saved. But then I must start to work, I must start to obey what God asked me to do. And when I start to obey what God asked me to do, God is starting to work with me. And we walk together in this life. And this is eternal life, knowing him and the one that he has sent. That's an eternal quality in your lifestyle. When you walk with him. That's what he died for. Okay, next one. 2 Corinthians 5. And he has committed to us. Everybody say committed. Committed. That's, he expects accountability. I commit this to you. He said, I expect accountability of you. I trust you. I'm telling you I have faith in you. I can commit all this, all my finances, all this and this and this and this. I commit it to you. He's saying, I trust my church. Yes, Lord. <laughs> With all the things in our lives. Yes. God says, I choose to trust you. Committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are there for Christ. Everybody say, ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. His appeal, his message through you. You become the message. When they see you, they must know the appeal of God. God is appealing you to do the following. Oh, the nation knows it because the church rose up and they know what God is saying. They're coming with God's mandate. And there's an appeal from heaven to do the following. Oh, why does the nation know that? Because the church was wise enough. They had the urge, they had the commitment at least to go on the mountain and get the message. Therefore, there's a message to the nation. It's not, there's not a lot of rubbish just ruling and reigning. Deception, 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 one of the key ingredients of the end time. But deception can only rule if the church with a message is silent. When we are silent, deception will rule. Deception will be there, but it doesn't mean deception will rule. The church is supposed to rule, even though there's conflict and in the spirit, a war like never ever before, except through the cross of what happened there in his death and his resurrection. 
But further for the church, there will be a conflict in the end time for the birthing of the beautiful bride of Christ for the second coming. Will you be part of it or will you be a spectator? Ambassadors, ambassadors, message of reconciliation, message of reconciliation. Remember what we spoke, was it last week about Jonah? Can't remember, last week about Jonah. You know, he is the messenger. And because Jonah has certain ideas, certain justifications, when God gives you a, a certain message, God gives you a certain command, and he has given it already, you can decide to get on your boat away from the calling. And that is not tomorrow you say, I will not obey God, I'm going to do my own thing. You deciding, eh, I cannot speak about Jesus. I'm shy. Oh, there's not time. Oh, it's not professional. I will get in trouble if I do this. Uh, um, and, and there's such a lot of things. And, and you choose to focus on the career, on the finance, on the relationship, on the circumstance, on the success, on the failure, on the head. Choose that. And that is your boat away, away, away from God's calling. And what will God send? You think it's the devil. No, it's God who sent the storm. And you bring the storm in the lives of others. The church brings the storm in the lives of Bloemfontein and South Africa. Because the church, with all its justifications, will not obey, will not submit, fear God and obey the call on their lives and just do what they're supposed to do. God forgive us. Amen? Not anymore. No, man, God going to help us. Through the blood, through the spirit, we're going to change. And get into that what he has for our lives, man. It's time. Amen. Yes. So what am I saying? That they're supposed to know there's reconciliation. Reconciliation, why? Because he opened up the way. There's always a way. There's always a way to hear the excellence from heaven. To hear the good news from heaven. Because from heaven comes the good news. From heaven comes the good news. And you are that link through your prayer on earth as it is in heaven. And you pray according to the word. The word will not return void. What you pray for what? The blue fountain in heaven. Let it become the blue fountain on earth. The, the schools in heaven in blue fountain. Let it become the schools on earth. How God dreamed about education. How God dreamed about the next generation. On earth as you dreamt about it in heaven. Lord, if, if. The church, me and you, has the maturity of grow up to get into that place where it's not about me, it's about him, it's about his people, it's about the nations. Oh, but when you must go into the nations, proclaim the gospel, uh, I'm not called to go out there. Okay, just laugh at yourself when you think about that. Because right now, you, can, you are called to be there. When you get in the car, you can, in your heart, just start to pray for Ukraine. Pray for the Palestinians. Pray for the Israelis. Pray for this. Pray. Your, your ministry in an hour's time can be any corner of the world. Wherever the Holy Spirit wants to take you with the prayer of faith from your heart in sincerity under the guidance of the Spirit. Impact. Wherever on earth. You are called into the nations. Live for yourself. Oh, but that just that moment of a genuine prayer out oh, there in the next two hours will have an impact there where the missile is going to fall. <laughs> Be part of that. Amen. Don't let us not live for ourselves. When Job prayed for his friends, things changed in his life when he looked beyond himself. Okay, next one. You show who? We, we show and make obvious, make obvious that you are a letter from Christ. Just stop there. People must look at your life and say, it's obvious she's serving Christ. It's obvious she has respect for Christ. It's obvious what she's saying is really from God. Well, it's obvious that the heart of the Father is a heart of forgiveness and love, but also respect and the fear, the fear of God to walk away from sin. The fear of God... Not a love that manipulates, a love, God is love and gracious, so we, we can manipulate that to do whatever we want and God will just forgive. No, 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 no. There's a fear of God. 
There's the authority and the intimacy. There's the king and the priest. The high priest that brought the offering. But there's the king that demands with authority. You change. This stop right now. Go therefore. You are forgiven. Go therefore and sin no more. You are forgiven. It's the priest in the presence on behalf of you asking for forgiveness. But sin no more. It's the king. The priest and the king. Amen. Intimacy and authority that must work both in our lives. Let it be so. The letter from Christ delivered by us, not written with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of human heart. Guys, we talk about move with message. Come on. What is that? That's message. That's message. But if it will not be the spirit of God, it will the demon be with the demon of rejection, the demon of busyness, the demon of deception, telling you, you're so busy, you're so there, you're so that. You cannot, you cannot this, you cannot that. But some other spirit going to write on you if you like it or not. Your choice by God's grace can be that you have the awesome privilege that the spirit of God is writing on your hearts. What is touching you very deeply? Why, why you allow that such a deep touch from demons instead of the deep touch from the spirit of God? The deep touch, why? Because I got hurt. Now I'm deceived. I'm focusing on that. I create my own. That's a muswap in English. Whew. Luckily, I didn't translate that. Um, a heap of... <coughs> you can create your own heap of whatever rubbish. And stand on that and think... This, 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 this. Because your focus is bitterness. Your focus is self-justification. Your focus is... All your busyness with all your ideas. You can stand on that mountain and be intimate with that. When you come down that mountain in the valley and you ask God to help you in this and this and this and this. And your focus is on that. And you trust God with promises to come and change that and change that and do this and protect you here and do that. Pray that God, by God's grace he will not answer you. <laughs> no, no, no. Because what you build will be burned away until, on the last day. No, God, burn away. Show me what must be burned away tomorrow. So that I don't waste the rest of my life. So that I can get into a place to build that what has eternal value. Huh? It's a little bit more silent to the back. Is it? You have more sin than the guys here? Or, or are they repenting with ya? Yeah. <laughs> Ah, you, you are here, I hope so, in Jesus' name. Is that the last one? No, forgive me, the sermon is too short. <laughs> what am I saying? The three? The, everybody say, the words, the work, the walk. I pray that you understand that, my brother, my sister, that when you come into the place, you open your mouth. You'll speak, but it's obvious that you're a message from God. Because what you speak, what you live, what you work, how you give yourself as if unto the Lord. They, 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 they have nothing to say against it. Mr. Mr. Joseph, Mr. Daniel, the, the king, the heathen king that I worship. And let's make a big uh, golden calf. He wasn't a calf. A uh, big statue of this king. And everybody must worship him. Worship him. Those kings are just, they have nothing to say. Except suddenly, not the whole nation must worship me. But suddenly, there's only one God. The God of Daniel. Oh, man, that's when Daniel said, this is the message. That's when the friends of Daniel said, we're not going to bow. Remember what you always say? We're not going to bow. And King, we want to know. We want you to know. God is able to save us. But if he does not save us, we still want you to know that we will not bow. That, that's powerful testimony. That's a powerful message. You hear? And my brother, my sister, that is when you get into the fire, when the people will see the Jesus, Jesus with you in the fire. The fourth one. Who's the fourth one there? The angel of the Lord. 
Jesus in the fire that that the world can create for you. Not what heaven creates, but whatever fire the world will create for you. When you fear God, doesn't matter what. And not, first of all, pray for your protection, but declare that he will be honored in the fire. In that place, when you walk with a message in the, into the fire that hell and flesh and the people out there can try to create for you, Jesus will be seen. When you have a fearful respect for God, not fear to run away, but fear to worship, to wow, to wow, to wow about your God. Let it be so, let it be so in Jesus' name. How did we say it in the first service? You can write down this sentence. You walk, talk, and your talk walks, but your walk talks longer than what your talk walks. You got it. Okay, there we go. Your talk walks. And your walk talks. <laughs> but your walk talks much longer than what your talk walks. You have it now? Adrian, will you follow for day luck? So, words, this is cheap. But your lifestyle and what you're saying through your lifestyle, it stands so much longer. That message is so much more longer having an impact on people's lives. On people's lives. Let it be so, man. Let it be so. Go and, go and do something. Sometimes when, when I was frustrated with certain things that happened in ministry and this and that, especially earlier, God helped me with... And I say, create these moments, these moments. That I, I would just get this kick to go out, go out on the street and just tell 20 people something about God. But it's like, start with the soft target. Yeah, what do you say? The soft target is the old auntie. You go to the old auntie, you tell the old auntie, Auntie, God has heard your prayers. And God, just bring your children and your grandchildren before the Lord. God will protect them. The old auntie will not tell you, food sack. The old auntie will say, thank you. And maybe two out of three times when I would do that, the tears will come. Just go and encourage those guys, man. Start, start with them. But then to go into the street and say, okay, I'm going to tell people they are well, valuable to Christ. God's going to speak to them. God, God loves them. God believes in them. And you walk, just walk, and you tell, you're precious to Christ. Walk with him. God's going to speak to you. After, like, I spoke to 20, 30 people, I'm just excited. And, and before they can be throwing a tantrum or this or that, you're gone already. You just say that and you walk. You just throw it out, man. Uh, it worked for me. I would, would later be so excited. I'm not waiting for a response. Was I successful or not? No, you just take, throw it out and be excited about the word. You are a message. You are a message. Say, God, I'm going to be a message today. What? I'm going to tell 30 people that they are precious. When you see a lady, don't say, lady, no, don't start like that. <laughs> lady, just remember you are precious. Let no man mess with you because there's one man that died for you. He gave everything for you and he will always treat you with respect. His name is Jesus. Amen. There's not one lady that responded negatively when I spoke to them. Or when a guy and a girl comes, or you see a guy and a girl there in the shop or there in the restaurant or wherever, come to them and say, I just want to say to you, lady, don't let this man mess with you. <laughs> oh. No, you must remember you are valuable. You belong to the king. He's the second husband. The husband in your life is Jesus Christ. And I would tell them, and I tell the guy, don't you touch what you can't afford. <laughs> you get, you go home excited, man. If you feel miserable or negative, go on the streets and be a message at least for a while. <laughs> Go and tell a few people that. You won't believe sometimes. I, man, I walk home and oh, I go home and I'm excited. 
You don't have to wait for the response and do this. If God tells you, you must not wait, then you wait. Okay? Then you wait. Like we said, as we said last time, three times in my life, only three times. So don't do that. You can be totally in judgment, just mental spirit. That I would tell, that I said to this guy, you must give your life to Christ now. Then your life will change forever. Otherwise, you're going to burn in hell. Only three people. Once was in Pretoria, after being very excited, we did a lot of street evangelism and a lot of things happened. I stayed in city center, so I walked home from Sunnyside and uh, I was thanking God for what happened. And in the dark, there's only this one big figure. It wasn't a demon or an angel coming closer. And uh, as I walked past, I felt that sense. You must give your life to Christ now and your life will forever change. Otherwise, it's, it's finished with you. And I thought, it's just because I'm excited now. Later, I realized, uh uh-uh. I ran back. And it came to the guy. He said, sorry, I just want to tell you, you need to go give your life to Christ right now. And your life will change forever. Otherwise, it's just I'm going to be a chamosh. And the guy looked at me and he said, how must I do that? I was ready to convince him. So I have all the things down there, you know. And he immediately he said, how must I do that? I, I, Sandberg said, why do you want to give your life to Christ? <laughs> I must first convince you. <laughs> this guy. He said, no, I'm a policeman. And I walked out of the place there where all the guys stay. Baraka, something like that they call it. And I looked at heaven and I didn't pray for years. I didn't, not church, not Bible, nothing for years. And I said, God, if you are real, come and change my life forever tonight he walked around one corner and here's a guy running back to him said you must give your life to christ right now and your life will change forever that you don't know how many people out there are crying out to god and saying god if you are real send someone or let somebody just come and pray for me let somebody just come in and cut is, is there anybody able to encourage me and i know sometimes it could be a man when the church do that that's more manipulation trick you know god uh, send the leader or the cell leader or the pastor or somebody and if they come and give me a hundred rand i know that you love me you know (laughs) Ah. (laughs) no i'm talking about guys out there desperate in the world and some of them god really wants to meet them in a special way but we can we can walk past them with our miserable own Horror movie that we write for our own lives or miserable, depressing, whatever, self-focused story. Walking past them. But let's be set free, tear up today that story. And say, God, I want to start all over again. I want your story, his story. Must become history. That's what they say, history makers. Hey, history maker, you'll make history when it's his story through your life. Amen. He with me and then that I, I mean i went home but that was like the cherry on the cake of the evangelism evening <sighs> you're still here Amen. i wanted to say something but i can't remember now so some leader prayed that i will stop now <laughs> yeah that was the one yeah that was the one but there was something whatever 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 <sighs> maybe the one i can share also but I shared that the previous week, man. The, the, the other one was the guy that we bought the house from that I said, you must give your life to Christ now. And later he was so angry. I said to him, you're going to chase me out of the house and I will not be able to buy this house. But I'm not moving. I'm not leaving before unless you give your life to Christ. You will first do that. And he gave his life to Christ and about 16 hours later he died. And uh, but that was just God. I never saw that. I just, but I just said the only reason why you're alive because the doctor said he had to die two years before that time. The only reason why you're alive is because you must give your life to Christ. But I didn't say that with anointing. I experienced. I saw a vision. <laughs> Nothing. I just said it. It's shocking how sometimes how naturally God will guide you, my brother, my sister. Where you think you are just in a place. You are in that place because you're supposed to. Bring a message. Yeah, this is what I wanted to say. Now I remember. You know, we are the message. And on a Sunday, you take out the letter, you are a letter. You're obvious. Obvious you're supposed to be. Obvious you're supposed to be a letter of Christ, not the letter of some other demon. 
to Bloemfontein. Letter of Christ. So on a Sunday, we open up the letter, and maybe the pastor writes something, or somebody writes something. When you're sitting here, you're not supposed to hear me. You're supposed to hear the Holy Spirit. You're supposed to be more busy with the Word and the Spirit than busy with me, hearing me. It's not supposed to be. Come on, let's get into that life. Amen? And then on a Sunday, we write into the letter. Then before you go out, you have your own envelope. You put nicely the letter in, in the name of professionalism, because at the work you cannot speak about Jesus, or in the, in, the, in the envelope of, I don't have time, or I'm still working through things in my life, and you put it in all those envelopes. And you walk with the envelope, nobody knows, nobody can read the letter of Christ, that's your life, in the week. And on a Sunday, we open up the envelope again, and let something be written on it. Niemand, that's Hamors. Hey, we tear up the envelopes today and let it be obvious that you're a child of God. Let it be obvious. Oh, that last scripture. Let it be obvious. It's obvious that that guy, that God loves me. It's obvious that God believes in me. It's obvious that he has a plan for my life. It's obvious that he's excited about me. Why? Because of that man and what he said to me. Because of the life that that lady lives at that workplace. It's obvious, but I just don't want to. Okay, it's his choice. But it's supposed to be obvious that the Church of Christ knows the heart of the Father and show it to the nations. God, come and help us by your grace, by your mercy, Lord. We honor you for who you are. Come and do a great work in our lives. God, I pray that you will touch every man every woman in this place. God, forgive us for allowing some other chamors to write on our hearts. Thank you for the blood of Christ that is wiping everything clean. That is like that rubber that is just taking out everything that was written. Please, Lord, please, Lord, help us in the process. Rejection or self-condemnation or religion or Bitterness, nothing going to write anymore on my heart because my heart is precious. Jesus Christ, you bought my heart with the ultimate price. Therefore, I will choose to respect you and allow only you through the word, Holy Spirit, to come and write on my heart. I pray that you will write on the hearts of every man, woman in this place so that your word, your heart, your preciousness will be seen into the nation because of what is written on the hearts of the church. I thank you for that, that you come and do that in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Give God the glory. God is awesome. Amen. Amen.